Hello and welcome to the AI with Arun show. This is your weekly AI briefing for the week ending November 30th, 2025. This week, we saw three major fronts open up. Global policy wars, the $600 billion compute race, and the breakthrough advancements in the next generation of AI models. In this video, my primary goal is simple, to give you the most valuable, easy to understand update on where AI is headed this week and why it matters to your future. So let's get started. Here are the top three stories dominating the AI conversation this week. First, the US launches the Genesis mission. President Trump signed an executive order launching a national initiative likened to the Manhattan Project for AI, aimed at harnessing vast federal data to train frontier models and secure American leadership in science and strategic tech. Second, regulatory fragmentation and delay. Just as the US regulatory landscape fractures with 38 states passing over 100 laws, the EU shocked the world by delaying core high-risk AI Act obligations until 2027. This signals major turbulence in global AI governance. And finally, the compute capital boom. The money required to build these powerful models is staggering. OpenAI is negotiating a massive $38 billion just to build data centers, underscoring the insane cost of compute. Meanwhile, Google unveiled Gemini 3, claiming the title of the world's most intelligent model, while Anthropic committed $30 billion in Azure compute to catch up. We start with Europe, which was once the global leader in the AI regulation. But this week, the EU threw a huge curveball following strong pressure from major tech companies like Apple and Meta. The European Union decided to postpone the application of core high-tech obligations under the EU AI Act until 2027. So what does the high risk mean? It means systems used in super sensitive areas like managing critical infrastructure, making hiring decisions, or providing essential public services. Companies deploying these systems now have years more time to comply, giving them room to adopt systems and documentation. This delay, part of the European Commission's digital omnibus package, highlights the intense tension between wanting to protect citizens and wanting to stay competitive with the US and China. But this policy package is drawing fire. The digital omnibus aims to simplify not just the AI Act, but also famous data laws like GDPR. The goal officially is to reduce compliance burdens and support innovation. However, this move sparked outright outrage. Over 127 civil groups call the proposals the biggest rollback of digital rights. Privacy advocates warn these challenge, these changes risk amplified manipulation via data-fed algorithms. Think of it like this. Your AI systems can use even more of your personal data without the same strict checks. They become much better at manipulating what you buy, what you believe, and even how you vote. Europe is choosing to ease safeguards, risking citizen privacy to try and boost its tech competitiveness. Across the Atlantic, the US regulatory landscape is the definition of chaos. While the EU is delaying, states are sprinting ahead. By late 2025, at least 38 US states had adopted more than 100 AI-related laws. Lawmakers introduced 1,134 AI-related bills in 2025, with 40 states passing at least one statute. These state laws address risks like deep fakes, transparency, and how governments use AI. The problem? The rapid, uncoordinated spread of rules creates a patchwork that companies want could significantly raise compliance costs and hinder the deployment of helpful AI. Imagine trying to launch a simple AI tool and having to comply with 50 different rule books. It's nearly impossible. This state chaos triggered an emergency response from Washington. The White House was preparing an executive order the eliminating state law obstruction of national AI policy, which planned to preempt or override certain state AI laws in favor of a uniform federal framework. The Trump administration was reportedly even preparing an AI litigation task force led by the Department of Justice, DOJ, to challenge these state regulations in court. However, the White House ultimately paused that draft order, specifically the part that would preempt state regulations through lawsuits and withholding federal broadband funds. This pause, caused by bipartisan opposition, 
leaves the state's patchwork of rules intact for now. Analysts warned that if the federal government had preempted everything, it would have weakened protections for consumers on issues like bias and transparency. Why did this policy fight matter beyond the courtroom? It's about money, specifically hundreds of billions of dollars in lost productivity. An industry study commissioned by the CCIA argued that a fragmented state environment, this confusing patchwork, could significantly slow down AI adoption. The report claimed that if the US could create a clear, cohesive federal framework that preempted conflict state laws, it would unlock an estimated AI abundance dividend of around $600 billion. This figure is now a crucial talking point for business and lobbyists urging the government to prioritize regulatory clarity over local autonomy, especially in critical sectors like healthcare and manufacturing. But sometimes local laws are needed to protect us from immediate harms. New York State just approved a landmark law targeting a practice called personalized pricing. This is where retailers use AI and your detailed consumer data to charge you a different, often higher price than the shopper standing right next to you. The new measure requires companies to avoid unfairly high prices based on sensitive data and introduces new transparency obligations. This New York law is a vital early test case in the US for regulating AI-enabled consumer manipulation and dynamic pricing, ensuring that AI tools can't penalize you just because they knew too much about your shopping habits. AI isn't just an economic issue anymore. It is full-blown political battleground. Advocates concerned about the dangers of unchecked AI are raising serious money, forming super PACs to raise $50 million to support candidates who favor robust AI regulations in the upcoming midterms. This is a direct counterattack to the $100 million raised by the anti-regulation group. Leading the future, a group backed by deep-pocketed venture capitalists like Anderson Horowitz. Meanwhile, the financial sector is also getting scrutinized. The European Parliament adopted a resolution urging strict supervision of AI in finance, pushing regulators to adopt existing laws to handle high-speed algorithmic trading and credit scoring driven by AI. The policy war is officially running on two tracks, consumer protection, and existential political influence. Now let's switch gears to the core technology driving the revolution, the frontier models. The model wars are escalating rapidly and Google just launched a major offensive. Google DeepMind officially released Gemini 3.0, which CEO Demis Hassabis described as the most powerful agentic and vibe coding model yet. Gemini 3.0 is scoring highest on critical benchmarks, including the Omniscience Index for Reasoning and Coding. What does agentic mean? It means the AI can act like an independent assistant. It can reason, it can break down multi-step goals, it can execute them like generating code or running complex simulations using natural language. Google is positioning this release as a new leader in intelligent systems. But Google is not alone. Anthropic, the team behind Claude, is fighting back hard and specializing in one area. Anthropic released Claude Opus 4.5, positioning it as the premier model for software engineering. Claude Opus 4.5 is the first model to exceed 80% accuracy on the extremely difficult SWE bench verified coding benchmark. This means the AI is getting frighteningly good at writing and debugging complex software autonomously. To maintain this lead, Anthropic made a massive strategic commitment, purchasing $30 billion in Azure compute capacity backed by new multi-billion dollar investments from Microsoft and Nvidia. This cash flow ensures they have the server muscle needed to challenge Google and OpenAI for years to come. But just as everyone throws billions at bigger and bigger models, a massive voice of doubt emerged from the heart of the industry. OpenAI co-founder Ilya Satskever stated this week that the current strategy of hyperscaling large models is yielding diminishing returns and creating systems with poorer generalization compared to human cognition. This challenges Wall Street's heavy bets that the path to AGI or artificial general intelligence is simply to make the models bigger and more expensive. The scaver's revelation signals that research and development need to shift towards novel architectures beyond brute force training. This is not just about size. It's about fundamentally rethinking how intelligence is built. 
In a similar vein, the math-focused startup Harmonic reached a $1.45 billion valuation, proving that highly specialized, efficient models are also attracting huge investor interest. It's not all policy fights and multi-billion dollar deals. AI is delivering tangible life-saving breakthroughs. In climate, Google DeepMind published a model that surpassed NOAA's accuracy in predicting hurricane trajectories. AI can now process vast climate data to provide earlier, more precise warnings, potentially saving countless lives. In science, the new open source model DeepSeq Math version 2 v2 achieved gold medal performance on International Math Olympiad benchmarks. This lowers the barrier for scientific computing and aids fields like physics and economics. And in health, researchers developed an AI system that accurately detects dementia, including Alzheimer's, from simple EEG brainwave data, with one variant reaching an accuracy of about 97% in classification. This could revolutionize early diagnosis, offering better patient outcomes. To power those breakthroughs, you need immense capital. And this week showed the astonishing scale of investment required for the AI infrastructure race. Major banks are negotiating to provide an incredible $38 billion in loans to fund the construction of data centers for open AI. This is debt financing on a national scale, just to keep up with the demand for training and deploying their models. Venture capital is also surging into specialized tools. In his fear, the creator of the cursor coding platform raised about $2.3 billion, valuing the company at roughly $29.3 billion. Even Europe is seeing massive inflows with French startup Mistral AI securing $500 million. Overall, over $3.5 billion was invested into AI startups in early November alone. Despite this boom, investors are questioning the credit, the sustainability of this rally with volatility hitting leading chip and AI stocks. The capital flows are causing major shifts in the hardware market, especially challenging the king of AI chips, NVIDIA. Reports indicate that rivals Meta and Anthropic are planning to spend billions on Google's tensor processing units, TPUs. This shift is happening because of supply constraints and the high pricing of NVIDIA chips. This major show companies are willing to cross competitive lines just to secure the specialized compute they need. Meanwhile, government agencies are also securing infrastructure. Amazon won a 50 billion contract to provide AI supercomputer via AWS to the US government agencies for national security applications. And finally, OpenAI partnered with Foxconn in a $5 billion initiative to mass produce custom AI hardware aiming to diversify manufacturing and reduce geopolitical risk. This brings us back to our top story. The US government is mobilizing public assets like never before with the Genesis mission. President Trump signed the executive order launching this national initiative, which aims to build an integrated AI platforms using the world's largest collection of federal scientific data sets. The goal is to accelerate breakthroughs in health, in energy and climate by training foundational AI models and creating specialized AI agents. This initiative, which explicitly fosters collaboration between deep tech, academia, and government, is a massive move to reinforce the US's goal of leading in AI-enabled science and strategic technologies, directly countering rivals like China. With that, we come to the end of the show. Please support our work by joining us as a member. All you have to do is go to the bottom of the description, and you will see the link for becoming our member. And thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the AI with Arun show. We'll back with the AI weekly news next week again. And keep watching AI with Arun show.